Hi, I'm Kyle Madsen and welcome to my channel. How hard should you be training to gain muscle? Let's find out. First things first, 99% of us aren't training hard enough. If you're trying to figure out if you should train harder or less hard, the odds are you should be training harder. If 100 people watch this, which, hey, fingers crossed, we'll see, but uh, one of them might be training too hard. The rest of them, no, like we're not doing that. Like even I have a hard time training hard enough. For me, I have to dial it back because I wanna work out more often, like twice a day, but I know I can't recover, so I have to stick to one. For example, when you're looking at an elite athlete, do you think that the difference between you and them is that maybe they're taking a little easier than you? Probably not. They're probably training way harder than you and they've obviously got the results. If it meant training less hard to get faster, a lot of us would be fast. So what are some signs that you're not working hard enough in the gym? Well, first things first, if you're not making a lifting face on the end of your every set, your last couple of reps, then you're not working hard enough. If you can keep a composed look and not strain and not close your eyes and like grimace, then you're not working hard enough. So during your set, after a few sets, you should have a good pump going. If you don't feel blood in the area, then your body is not having enough time under tension. Now, if you've watched my other videos, which I hope you have, if not, click one of these links and go watch another one. But the thing that I always preach is, it's all about consistency and habits. I don't talk about going super hard all the time, so I wanna make this video very clear that I think when you train, you should be going hard. But just how hard should you be going? What I think is you build a consistent habits where you're getting in the gym, and each time you get in the gym, you're gonna go a little bit harder than last time. That's progressive overload. That's the number one way to build muscle. All right, so now you're training harder. You're training harder than last time. You're going hard. Anywho, by the time the next workout comes around, if you're still sore two, not two, but maybe three, if you're sore three days later, you need to take it a little bit easier. If you're brand new, don't expect to be keeping up with your friend who's been working out this whole time. Like you need to actually like acclimate into like the stress. So what I think is, if you are on a three day rotation for like push, pull legs, if you hit push and then two days later, you come back to hit push again and you're still really sore, you need to go less hard than last time. I think you run through the motions, but you're not going to work yourself. Then when you're fully recovered, you remember how hard you went the time before. And you're like, nah, we're not doing that again. Take it a little bit easier, but then the next time go a little bit harder. Once you're not sore between from your first workout to your next workout in the same muscle group, once you're not sore, that's when you start going harder than last time. Start getting that progressive overload. Once again, I mentioned it in a previous video, but you should be working on your body parts. Like for example, your shoulders should be getting worked twice a week, but no closer than 48 hours apart. So you can get a push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, and a rest day or throw a cardio day in. Now you've both taken at least 48 hours between all your workouts and you hit your body parts twice a week. That's how you're going to gain muscle. So we're talking about intensity. So obviously what comes up is training to failure. Me personally, I like throwing training to failure in every once in a while. That doesn't mean one rep max. That doesn't even mean three rep max. Basically like sometimes I want to fail in my eight to 12 rep range. If I can hit eight, good, 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 nine struggle. And I know I'm probably not going to get 10. I'll still attempt 10 and I'll attempt it. And I'll have my spotter throw his hands on there and keep a little constant movement. And then I'll rack it like that's the intensity. Um, again, another example is like, you're not going to want to hit reps to failure and maxing all the time on every set because you don't want to get overworked. But you want to be a little bit, you want to do a little bit more weight than the time before. You're not always going to be able to do that, but you should try a little bit each time, but try a little harder. Additionally, I like to fail with uh, biceps, triceps, that kind of stuff, because it's safer. Like if I'm doing a bicep curl, and I'm on eight, nine. If I go to 10 and I fail, I just let it hang. I just drop it because like, I don't have that weight over me. It's super safe. So I might as well take advantage of that attempted rep. Now I'm not telling you to try and lift super heavy weights for like a one or two rep failure. That's how you tear biceps. Basically, if you want to know how hard to train for maximum muscle, you just got to become obsessive. And like the reason for that is if you want the maximum gains, you need to get in touch with your body. You got to figure out how often you can work out and it's going to be a little bit different for everyone. But if you want to get like a good amount of muscle and you want a starting point, follow these tips. 
And then as you understand your body a little bit better, adjust. During the set, we're working hard, we're getting the reps. How long between sets should you be resting? Get like the maximum intensity. Me personally, I like to rest two to three minutes, sometimes a little bit more from working for maximum strength. Hypertrophy, I'll bring it back just a little bit. And my personal philosophy is I use the weight room to build muscle. I don't really use the weight room to burn calories. So I always have that rest at least two minutes. Some guys like to have no rest, but they're basically doing cardio with weights and their body's not replenishing all that ATP into their muscles. Like your body needs to replenish that energy so you can actually do more. Cause like you're not gonna be able to tear down your muscles if they don't have the energy to actually perform the motor function. Like I said, 99% of us, maybe even 99.9, .9, should not be afraid of overtraining because really out of a hundred of us, maybe one person, maybe one person's hitting it too hard. And so train every day, train light enough so that you're fully recovered by your next workout and train often enough so that you're hitting every body part twice a week. And then that's exactly how you're going to get better. That's, you're not leaving any gains on the table because let's face it. We all know how to gain muscle, you work out. But the real trick is how hard can you work out and how much muscle can you get efficiently? Because you want as much muscle as you can quickly. And so you don't want to be wasting days. You don't want to be leaving energy on the table. And you definitely don't want to be overtraining so that you're pushing yourself too hard, wasting all that energy, working hard for less results. So as long as you follow those guidelines, you're gonna get as much muscle as possible. Also, if you're interested in getting a little bit more intense training, um, I like to take a pre-workout. It doesn't have to be like a specific pre-workout. It can just be like a caffeine source. I know they have like caffeine pills for appetite suppressants. Uh, energy drinks are, you know, an option. And then there's always the actual pre-workout. So if you want more intense workouts, that's something I do for my own workouts. Not every single one, but sometimes when I'm tired and I'm going to go to the gym, I'm kind of talking myself into going then that's a little something to help me, you know, get the little edge on. Anyways, I'm Kyle Madsen. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, the last video, we got a lot of likes. Let's try and beat that. Let's see if we can get to 15 likes. And until next time, let's get it.